Money Matt, the man here, hope you're doing well. So I saw the new movie Argyle over the weekend. It is directed by Matthew Vaughn, who is known for movies like Stardust, at kick -Ass, the first kick -Ass, uh X-Men First Class, and Kingsman. Um, so I was looking forward to this movie. Uh, you got Bryce Dallas Howard in here, I like her. You got Sam Rockwell, who can do no wrong. You got Brian Cranston, uh, Henry Cavill, John Cena, uh, Sophia Mattella, Catherine O'Hara. It's a stat cast. And I, I like Matthew Vaughn's other films. Uh, King Gas was something cool, and yes, yeah, it was a comic book movie, but it was something, you know, it was all rated, stylized, um, energy to it, Nick was Cage in there. Uh, we got introduced to Chloe Grace Moretz. Um, and then X Men First Class was also something new and fresh, a prequel set in the 60s. Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, Jennifer Lawrence, all three of them were pretty much unknown. I mean, James McAvoy was known, but he wasn't A-list. Um, and then the Kingsman movie was something cool and fresh and fun in the spy genre. So, getting into this, this is like a spy film. Um, it looked interesting. I'm not going to do it. Positives. Bryce Dallas Howard, I think he does a really good job in here. I mean, I like Bryce Dallas Howard, like I said. I like her in the Jurassic World movies. You can go all the way back to, like, you know, The Village. Which is interesting because this year is the 20th anniversary of The Village. So for the past 20 years, we have watched Bryce Dallas Howard become a I think I'm really pretty good actress. Um, then she was in other films like The Help, Hereafter, Fifty Fifty, and Twilight, uh, Terminator Salvation. And like I said, she has grown into, you know, a really good actress, I think. And here is no different. She has great chemistry with Sam Rockwell. She holds her own with Brian Cranston and Catherine O'Hara. Uh, she's funny. She can be a badass in moments. She has that um, chemistry, that romantic side. Um, I thought she did a good job. Sam Rockwell. He can do no wrong. Ever since, ever since the Green Mile back in, I think it was 99, with Tom Hanks. Uh, this guy has been a force on the screen. Most of the time playing, you know, character actor, a uh, character actor, if you will. Not really, a lot of times not getting the main spotlight, but always, you know, one of those important characters. Galaxy Quest. Um, then I was the Iron Man 2. And so on and so forth. And then he won his Oscar. For three billboards outside of Evan, Missouri. Um, he's great in here. Um, I think he has great chemistry with Bryce Dallas Howard. He pulls off the action stunts really well. He can be funny. He can be a goofball at times. Especially a goofball. Um, and I like him. I like, I like Sam Rockwell. The action. I like the action in here. Once again. Matthew Vaughn brings his own style of action in here. A little bit like Guy Ritchie, but not quite. We can get that flavor of Guy Ritchie in here. Um, humor, this movie, I was laughing a lot throughout the movie. So I thought this movie was funny. This movie has a lot of twists. Um, and I like them, I mean, I'm not like... None of them like, oh my god. It completely changes the movie. Like the Sixth Sense, no, we don't have those type of twists, but like, they have a lot of twists in here throughout the film. That keeps you engaged, and keeps you, you know, focused on the movie. Um, and I, I, I think the ensemble 
You have a great ensemble like Vegas, Henry Cavill, John Cena, Dua Lipa, Catherine O'Hara, Brian Creston, Sam Rockwell, Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Sophia Batella. Um, I mean, a huge cast. And I think they all had their moments to shine. My negative with this movie. Um, this movie is 2 hours and 19 minutes. The third act is way too long. There's way too much in this third act. Um, there's this whole fight scene that goes on and on and on. And when you think it's over, it keeps going. To the point that I literally nosed off and was thinking of other things. Then I returned to the movie and I was like, this is still going on? Oh my god. Comes a little bit over the top too. That you're just like, really? I mean, I've, I've suspended my disbelief with certain moments throughout the movie, but this it is going a little too far. And like I said, it didn't help that it was too long. I mean, I think this movie would have been a lot better if it was like 30 minutes shorter. Make it like an hour 50. Also, I have too much green screen. Um, you can tell in a lot of scenes, most of them, that the background is CGI and the green screen behind them. Um, I don't know why. Um, that also doesn't help with the budget being over 200 million to make the movie. Um, I don't know why you have to put in green screen. That just adds more to the budget. Then you have the cat in here. That's all CGI cat in the entire movie. Why did you not get a real cat? Other than maybe for some action scenes that the cat is involved in, you can put in CGI. But when most of the time the cat is in the backpack of Bryce Dallas Howard's, why do you have a CGI cat? You know how much money you were wasting every time you got a CGI the cat? A lot. Um, and the cat has no point in the movie. You know, this main thing, they made the trailer to think, oh, there's going to be something interesting about that cat. That cat is going to be the twist in the movie. No. That cat is not special at all. Like most cats, they're not special. Dogs are better. Green screen background reminded me of the Star Wars prequels. Where they have so much uh, green screen that I'm like, why do I feel like I'm watching like a early 2000s Star Wars movie? Why? The thing about this movie, it reminded me of other movies. I don't know why we're in this. I noticed that last year with a couple movies like The Creator where these filmmakers are making movies. Yes, original, but you clearly see the inspiration, the heavily influenced of other movies or even even just similar plot devices or story meets that you know okay you're not a remake you're not a reboot you're not a sequel but you're taking ideas and other movies and putting them in here right we just got that movie in 2022 the lost city with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum and Daniel Radcliffe. Bryce Dallas Howard is an author who's writing a book where that book is being actually happening in life. And it's like, that was in The Lost City. That's not, that movie's not even two years old yet. We literally just got that in less than two years. And now you're recycling that main part of that character into this movie. Why? Then I'm watching this movie and I'm like, every time Bryce Dallas Howard has a moment, she blacks out. And when she does, she lands and she's somewhere else. Maybe she's on a boat or a train or in someone's hotel. And I'm like, where did I see this before? In another spy movie. Oh, 
That's right. That Tom Cruise movie with Cameron Diaz, Night and Day, that every time something happens, Cameron Diaz, like, blacks out or whatever. And then she wakes up somewhere else, whether on an island, whether on a train, whether in a car. And I'm like, We, why are we recycling this again? With me, without me. With me, without me. The movie was fun. I thought the action was good to a certain point. It was funny. I liked the actor, Sam Rockwell, Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, and we don't get that much of Henry Cavill. So all that promotion of Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. You got about five minutes of Henry Cavill. 3.7 out of 5. I said, other than for the actors and some of the action and the humor, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Apple. In my, in my opinion, Apple has not hit, has not hanging it out of the park lately. I mean, Kills on the Flower Moon, Napoleon, and now Argyle. That's the matter here. Let me know in the comments below, did you see Argyle? Were you a fan of the movie or not? Uh, if so, let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know. I would love to know your thoughts.